Hey, it's winter time. Do you think there's anything going on in our pollinator garden? You bet there is. Let's go check it out. We're here in our pollinator garden at the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island. And here's Rachel. She's going to tell us what's going on this time of year. Hi, Rana and everyone. Welcome. Um, yeah, so this time of year, it's a fun time to be in the garden. Um, there's not a lot happening yet to the naked eye, but there's actually a lot happening that you can't really see. So we're just going to take a little walk through and talk about all the animals that are actually using this habitat right now, even though you can't necessarily see them all. Some you can. Um, so right now we've got a lot of the seed pods and flower stalks from last year's plants that were blooming, um, such as this bee balm and some of the golden rods and other things. And we've actually left those here on purpose um, for a couple of reasons. They provide a lot of cover for um, birds. We get a lot of warblers that hang out here and little towies. And it also provides seeds for seed-eating birds like our finches and um, siskins and other birds that come through. So um, in addition to just being pretty and having some nice texture in the winter um, for the garden, they provide a lot of these things that our local um, native wildlife need. So um, very soon we'll be getting ready to you know, cut some of those back and give the new growth space to fill in for our um, 2022 summer garden. But right now, um, it's just the end of winter and we're just enjoying the last bits of those seed heads. Um, another thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're getting ready for spring in your garden, sometimes we have the kind of urge to just tidy everything up and make it like a clean slate. Um, but if you have a habitat garden and you're um, interested in seeing more native wildlife like butterflies, maybe some luna moths, some orb weavers during the summer, you want to remember that this kind of habitat is where they're raising their young. So um, a lot of those insects, you might think, well, where do they go? Because they're not biting me and they're not out all summer and they're not flying around. Well, a lot of them only live just during the summer and then it's their, either their eggs or their larvae uh, that are overwintering out here. So. You can't necessarily see them, but lots of baby pollinators, um, baby orb weaver spiders, and other really cool <coughs> invertebrates are out in this garden right now. So when we get ready to cut back this foliage and kind of do our spring tidying, um, the best thing you can do if you have a spot for it is to take these stalks and um, just make some brush piles in the woods like we're lucky we've got a lot of space here that we can do that um, if you don't have a yard that you can do that with you know maybe you can make some little brush piles in your garden and that'll be the first um, place that your bumblebees and other cool pollinators will want to go when they're building their nests for next year is go under those little piles so um, you can create space using the kind of what we think of as debris from the garden but whatever you do don't put it in the landfill because it will break down on its own so um, yeah, one of my favorite things that is pretty all winter is our little blue stem seed heads. They get a really cool kind of fluffy flower that sometimes blows in the wind and when the sun hits it the right way, it's really pretty spectacular. So yeah, in our garden right now, debris and old foliage and things we don't think of as you know, the prettiest parts of the garden are really important for all the animals that we want to have here the next year. Another thing that we have, um, in our garden is hollies. So we have a couple of different hollies and other burying plants that hang on to their berries all winter. So over here we have a yopon holly and a dahoon holly and we also have some inkberry hollies we can look at in a minute. And um, hollies you'll probably notice their berries start to appear like right around Thanksgiving, Christmas time and they hang on all winter. They're not, um, they're not every bird's favorite berry usually you know things like blueberries and service berries that go first they're really tasty berries but late in the winter before all the bugs come out you'll see birds like cedar wax wings and your mockingbirds they start to get a little more desperate and um, this is the time of year they really depend on these holly berries for food and we've actually had a couple of flocks of cedar wax wings out here eating our berries which is really fun to watch um, so yeah no matter what yard you have whether you're in a swampy area or maybe you're closer to the beach sandy area there's a holly for every zone and um 
we think of hollies as being those really prickly things um, like the American holly which is a little prickly and maybe you don't want it right next to your front door but a lot of hollies are like this inkberry holly here and they have really really soft leaves they're not prickly at all same with the dahoon and the yopon holly um, some are short like the sky some are tall so you can always find a spot for a holly in your yard somewhere and they're great wildlife plants for many reasons let's see oh and that does bring me to another good point this is the very end of shrub and tree planting season here in the outer banks so if you have a space in your yard you want a shrub or tree maybe a holly maybe a blueberry maybe a hydrangea i've got this oak leaf hydrangea here this is the time to do it um, so that those plants can get well rooted before our summer heat gets here yeah so we're getting really excited to see what's going to start emerging here in our garden in just a few weeks so hope you'll come back and see us then mm -hmm.